terrible December retail sales figures. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Today I would like to start the day by having a look at this article written by Jason Murphy for news.com.au about one businesses, you know, very large businesses, initial retail sales figures from December. And unfortunately, they're not looking too good. And before your question in the comments, don't worry, I still have my morning shine of coffee right here <laughs> every time. So where there's smoke, Aussie retail icons shock announcement. Mm, shocking, really? We'll see. Australia's entire retail industry is propped up by the December sales period. But this year, Christmas never came for one iconic group. And we're, we're all familiar with the Rivers brand and some of the other major brands with this group. So we all depend on a strong economy. For most of us, our jobs are secure when the economy is strong and they're at risk when the economy is weak. That's why news on Tuesday about bushfires had begun to hit retailers could worry all of us. Household consumption is the biggest single part of the Australian economy, bigger than imports, bigger than exports, bigger than government. When consumer spending suffers, the whole economy takes a hit. And this is a very good point. This is a very good point that Jason is making in this article. Because well, this is a measure, I'd say a proxy measure for household consumption, consumer sentiment. If you're confident, if you're jazzed up, if, you, you know, if you're an American and you think the next golden age is coming with, with Trump and the trade deals all going good, you're going to be more confident. You'll be spending more. You'll be taking more risks. And that will help stimulate the economy. It'll help it going. But if you're an Australian, you've got the bushfires, you've got the droughts, you, you, the only positive news seems to be spin in the media that isn't backed up by anything else. Uh, is an Australian golden age coming? Is it even possible? So... There's the, there's the thing. Everyone's talking. They're blaming the government. They're blaming the government for this. Oh, ScoMo should do that. ScoMo should do this. The government is a, isn't a very big part of the economy with regards to just how big a chunk the householders are. And the government tries to nudge us. They try to you know, push us by hoping. They're hoping the reserve banks cut to the cash rate. We'll you know, get more people in the market, get more people borrowing. We'll increase house prices and you know, have the wealth effect. And, or they'll have to go out and buy white goods which will increase retail trade. They're hoping one thing leads to another. And that's kind of you know, what they can do. Everything else, all the stimulus, sometimes it can be a bit of a, bit of a net negative. So when retailer Masoic Brands announced in December sales were terrible because of fires, it was worth noticing. Masoic Brands, a closing, clothing retail company, said the fires had hit its business hard in the crucial Christmas period. Sales in its 1,379 stores under the brand brands Noni, B, Rivers, Rockman's, Katie's were down 8% compared to the period last year. Just look at the number of stores that they've got there. Over 1,300 stores across Australia in all these different brands. And I know, I mean, a lot of us may not be interested. I mean, Rivers is one I'd go to. I can't say I'd go to any others. But... It's a good indicator, litmus test for just the, the sentiment of the economy. Sales through the second half of November and throughout December, a critical sales period for the group, were significantly impacted by the ongoing bushfire tragedy, the company said. 20% of the group's stores have been directly impacted by the fires and some 32% of the group's 1,386 stores are located in regional areas where consumer confidence has been particularly fragile. So a third, a third of their stores. So what do they have? How many? Oh, thirteen eighty, but still over thirteen hundred, regardless. So this is a share price. It's it's uh, taken a healthy hit, a healthy hit. Mosaic Brands is just one of many retailers on the stock exchange. It has come forward early with its trading update, but we'll have to wait a bit longer to hear what's. What is in what the story is from other retailers like JB Hi-Fi, Harmy Normans, Bunnings, Owners West Farmer, etc. So it'll be interesting to see what the other figures are. I know JB Hi-Fi were were spruking up months ago that they were beating the odds and they were doing really well. 
I, I seem to think that may have something to do with people mistaking the tax deduction or the you know the change in, in tax rebates with a cash handout and rushing out and buying that new mobile phone. So where there's smoke, I can't help think that of all the bushfire effects, it may be smoke haze that is worst for the retail business. Who is keen to go out when you can barely see to the end of the street? Bushfires are devastating for small rural communities, but the truth is those rural communities are usually not big enough to register much impact on the national GDP figures. And yes, I mean, he's right there, particularly when they're talking about people are leaving in the comments. I know oh, this will be good for construction. It won't really, it's not, not big enough, guys. It's devastating to the people that are there. And, you know, for the scale of the fires, one thing you have to realize, for the scale of the fires and the, the loss of life, life, which has been tragic, it's a lot less than it was in the past. You know, a lot of people have managed to stay safe. So there's a lot of benefits that we can say that, you know, sure, there needs to be an investigation, needs to be addressed, and we need to avoid this. But, you know, historically, some bushfires have had much greater deaths. So when you talk about smoke haze blanketing Melbourne, Sydney and Canberra for weeks on end, that, that's something that will show up loud and clear in the statistics. And yes, I, I was talking to, to one of our clients yesterday who was coming up from Melbourne and he's saying it's just, it, it feels terrible. Just every day you got the smoke, smoke everywhere. You just have to stay in your house, shut the windows and turn on the AC. I mean, we've been lucky here in Brisbane. We haven't had much, much smoke haze. For us in our house, it would kind of... Uh, I'd have to have everyone in the studio here. This is the most least permeable part of permeable part of the house. Everything else is old Queenslander with gaps everywhere. So, unless they're selling P2 face masks, I doubt retailers are doing much business. I was at a large modern shopping center in Melbourne on Tuesday when the air quality was officially deemed hazardous and despite all the advice about how shopping centers have great air conditioning, haze was obscuring the view inside the center. One shopkeeper I spoke to was furious about the smoke. And, I mean, that's it. There's only so much you can filter out through the air conditioning systems. You're still going to have smoke coming in through the doors and through the gaps. Of course, it could be that online shopping is going crazy, although not everywhere. In some places where deliveries have been cancelled due to smoke. I bought an air purifier on eBay and it has been going non-stop since it was delivered. Well, guys, you know, if you're buying consumer purchase items, Please use my referral link below for eBay to help support the channel. I have to get a plug in there. I bet I'm not the only one who's substituting online for shopping in person. But of course, my purchase came from a Chinese company. And the only real boost to the Australian economy for my purchase was the wage of the postman who delivered it. It's not the same as buying from a local shop. Well, yeah, that's it. So desperate times. Retail trade in Australia has already suffered throughout most of 2019. Department chain Harris Scarf went into administration and announced it would close 40% of its stores. In April and July, sales growth was literally zero. The promised booth in sales from higher tax returns never materialized, and weakness continued right up until October. But then November was a surprise success boosted by Black Friday online sales. So people, well, we've seen the saving rate has gone up. So people have been saving more. So are people just being smarter with their money? I know we made a purchase we purchased a new washing machine that you may not be able to hear it's running right now but if the camera starts suddenly shaking it's it's a bloody fast one it's brilliant but we ordered that online on uh, cyber monday because we got a good deal kind of i wanted to get one for about eight years rachel didn't want to spend the money <laughs> so you got to convince the wife sometimes so there you go i mean look look at that guys it's it can't really not really stellar is it the November data made it possible to be hopeful if we put the worst of it behind us. But the fires make it extremely likely December 2019 will record the weakest growth of any month of the year, probably negative in seasonally adjusted terms. January won't be much better. Boxing Day scale sales are already falling out of fashion. And then the fires have complicated things even more. With the start of the year looking like this, it's going to be a very hard time for retailers and since we all depend on the money going around the sector, potentially a hard year for all of us ahead. But one thing we have to realize as well, guys, is that the retail sector, it's about 10% of the workforce here in Australia. It is a big, big chunk of, of our workforce. And a big, you know, a company with 1,300, over, over 1,300 stores 
is reporting bad trade in December. Well, I think this could be seen as a good lead indicator of the rest of the data we will receive for December. What do you think, everyone? Do you think it's, you know, am I, am I accurate there? Do you think Jason's on the money with his predictions or his warning signs for this coming year? Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to help us produce more content, there's several ways you can do that. We have the ability for you to join us on Patreon for a small monthly donation. You can join here on the YouTube channel. That, that's a great way for you to get access to emojis and other badges that you can use in chat. We have affiliate links with Independent Reserve for your crypto trading, Amazon for your consumer purchases, and eBay as well. For all of these, we receive a small commission every time you make a trade or transaction. It's a great way for you to support the channel. And I've just confirmed my Brave browser referral link. If you'd like to download and use Brave, you can use that as a way of supporting the channel. We receive a share every time you use that link. Or what? no, we receive a commission every time you use that link. It doesn't cost you a cent. I, I honestly, I, I looked at it a while ago until I realized that all my, my Chrome plugins can work with the Brave browser without any issue. Then I jumped to it. So now I'll, I'll give it a shot and I'll keep using it. Maybe I won't get the embarrassing adverts appearing when I'm capturing articles again and putting them on the, on the video. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. We also have a very own pocket squares at the highs. It says website handmade by Rachel. And we have PayPal for anyone who wants to make a direct donation. Thank you to everyone for all your help and support. We appreciate it. Take care, and I will see you all later today. Bye for now.